why is the sexual attitude reassessment important and how can it matter to you? I'm here with Bianca Loriano. Did I say that right? Yeah. And I'm Kathy Bartilli from the IntimacyDojo.com and Bianca Loriano.com is your website. And you'll be presenting the SAR, Sexual Attitude Reassessment, at Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit in a, like just over a month. Um, why is it important? What does it actually do? So a SAR, uh, which is the acronym for Sexual Attitude Reassessment, is a training that's been really important for the field of sex educators, counselors, and therapists. Um, it's very much um, a, what people consider an essential part of our certification as well as our learning and unlearning process. Mm -hmm. um, so a SAR can really do a variety of different things. Usually I like to tell people that it's supposed to help us understand like what our limits are, mm -hmm. as well as what boundaries we want to create with other people in our life, whether they be interpersonal or professional, mm -hmm. and also so that we can be stronger, better educators, providers, healers with the communities that we're working with. So if we have someone who we're providing care for who tells us, about a sexual activity or behavior or experience that they've had, and that's one of our limits, we're able to then say, listen, that's a really important topic. I have a great referral list of people who could probably really help you if you're interested, right? So that way we don't have to shame someone or make them feel like they don't have access to resources that can really nurture mm -hmm. that part of their experience mm -hmm. and their healing process and their care for themselves. Um, so it really is, not just something that's for people in the sexuality field, but it's really something that all of us need this kind of training and workshop for. So um, my hope is that um, knowing what SARS look like in our field, I didn't have the best SAR experience. Um, mm. It was pretty one dimensional. The bodies that were represented were all the same. Mm. It was very color free. There were no disabled bodies, no bodies of color. You know, it was just a very traditional star it was about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that the star that we created is something that um, is a lot more on the vanguard of the work that we're actually well, doing. Well, if in you and Ida, who are, you know, that's very vanguard. And I hate, yes. I hate feeling like I feel invisible. I'm a bigger person and I, almost all sex ed, like videos and demos or whatever, they're, they're like size two super, like yogini models, whatever. And I'm just like, well, great. I already, my brain already knew those people could have sex. Right, exactly. I, I want to see that I get to have that kind of an experience too. Exactly, right? It's like the affirmation that comes with the representation. Mm -hmm. So I call it a POC, like a people of color centered star, nice. um, because it centers the bodies of people of color mm -hmm. in the variety of ranges that, it, that they come in. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, is like a really revolutionary approach to stars because a lot of the media that we have available to us within our field does not represent us, just like it doesn't represent larger bodies or disabled bodies or trans bodies mm -hmm. in a similar way. So um, that representation is really important. So what we've been able to do is gather media that does come from a sexuality field focus, mm -hmm. but also media that we're constantly interacting with, like common and popular films, uh, television shows, memes, the internet has just like revolutionized SARS, really. Um, and has the SAR become something that's so accessible to us that we recognize that it's useful in our daily lives. Yeah. And just in the way that we spend time with ourselves, the music we listen to, the entertainment that we allow to be able to consume and come into our communities and into our space. Um, so it really is something that, you know, you have to invest in, right? Because it's an experience that is really full, Sorry, I didn't turn my phone off, so you might hear a little beep. That's <laughs> fine. You're popular. Um, you gotta be on call sometimes. But, um, you know, what the star experience is, a two-day experience. So we're together for eight hours. And I know it sounds like a lot, but it's not just straight lecture. Mm -hmm. So the time that we'll be spending with participants is, you know, yes, there is going to be a little bit of lecture around community agreements and conversations in that way. So it's more collaborative conversations yeah. than direct lecture. And then there's a media literacy and a media justice component. So we do bring in media of a variety of different formats. So painting, uh, sculptures, we bring in a variety of different forms of media, um, books, texts, religious texts, right? Like pornography is definitely there, but it's not the hard basis for a lot of the, the representations. Yeah. I think that's probably going to be one of the other shifts that might happen. Um, and, you know, it's because sometimes in our field, 
people use media for shock value, yeah. and that's not what this is used for. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're using media in a way that we actually engage with it, mm -hmm. so that the content of the star is something that we need being able to utilize throughout the rest of our lives. Um, so that's what we're hoping is possible with the SAR and a variety of different learning outcomes that we provided that you can find on the Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit website mm -hmm. under the schedule drop-down box. Um, so it is two days because it is a full experience. We have to talk about topics in our field that we don't always get a chance to talk about. So things like strategic use of our privileges that we come with. They're not all the same, so we really have to have time to sit and think about how can I strategically use my privilege when I'm in a particular setting? Mm -hmm. What does it look like to be in support of communities of which I'm not a part of? What does it mean when I want to cry hearing someone share with me something and I'm the professional in the room yeah. and I've been trained not to have an emotional response? <laughs> right? Like, So what do we do as human beings when we're engaging with other human beings? Yeah. Um, so that's really, I mean, you know, when have we ever really been spoken to like human beings, right? Like when I was trained to be a teacher, nobody ever told me when to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, especially if you're in the middle of class. No, you're, right? you're not supposed to. You're a robot. You're up there teaching and you should have no, you can't have had a bad day the night before. Or what exactly. Like, yeah, like we can't be human beings. So yeah. we're really trying to shift that uh, for this workshop. Um, yeah. I love that. That's. That sounds really exciting. And that's the two days before Woodhull starts, correct? Exactly. So it's the Wednesday and the Thursday. Um, it's in the hotel. We still get the same rates for hotel rooms. Um, and we decided to do it before the conference because, and not during the conference, um, because it is a professional development opportunity. And we hope that people's employers will recognize that this will be a benefit for them as the employee, but also for them as far as the community that they're a part of who will bring back this knowledge and this conversation to their communities to make their work more solid. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that people will be able to spend those eight hours being trained just as they would spending their eight hours a day at work and getting paid to attend that training. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to be working this week on a page on my website called How to Get Your Employer to Support Your Attendance uh -huh. to the Star. Oh, <laughs> so I'll be giving folks a, like a script of what to say to your boss nice. and what are the ways that you can, you know, I use the word barter, but I probably won't use it in the setup, but mm -hmm. how, how can you barter your attendance to go to this SAR and not to the conference? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or if you want to go on the conference on your own time for the weekend, you get a discount for participants who can then sign up for the, for the conference. So there's a variety of different options. Yeah. And I, I really want to make it accessible to people in all the ways that it can be. So that's coming up as a way to help support people. Um, and Woodhall also has a couple of scholarships of their own. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage people to reach out and check out their website, reach out to Mandy and Ricky, mm -hmm. um, inquire about the scholarships. Um, because it's a full scholarship um, to attend the SAR. So everything to for to attend. Yeah as far as registration. Yeah, so I just want to clarify too, you said it's a, a, P, a POC, people of color, SAR. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean only people of color should attend or that anyone can attend? Yeah, that's a great question because everybody should attend. So I call it a people of color centered SAR. Centered, yeah. Right? So we center the experiences of some of our most, most marginalized community members, which are people of color. So we're talking like black trans families, we're talking mm -hmm. indigenous, you know, women, we're talking about young parents, yeah. um, you know, people with disabilities who are online doing revolutionary work yeah. and bringing disability justice to everything. So it really is a very interdisciplinary experience and it's not just for people of color, but it is a SAR where people of color will be affirmed and like their experiences, for example, of like racism mm -hmm. and of white supremacy and of surviving those realities are discussed and are affirmed. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kathy, we talk about white supremacy as a fetish, mm -hmm. as a form of power, objectification. As a structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we talk about it in all the ways that it can manifest in our lives and how it impacts us as human beings. Yeah. So we do expect people to come in as their full human self. Um, and we also provide referrals and support um, for people after the SAR. And so we have a list of professionals who are willing to offer. 30 minutes free for mm -hmm. one session with individuals who really need to process or who might need like some coping strategies that I'm not 
prepared or even should be giving other people. You know, I can share what my coping strategies are, but I'm not a mental health professional in that way. Mm -hmm. So I want there to be an opportunity for people to pick and choose who they want to talk to, mm -hmm. right? So if we have like an older white woman who comes, who's heterosexual and divorced, she might want to talk to the older white heterosexual therapist, right? And maybe she doesn't. Maybe yeah. she wants to talk to somebody who's completely not in her community, where she has total anonymity, and then she can pick the person who she's never heard of. She can reach them, look them up. Right, so we really are trying to care for all aspects mm -hmm. of the participant when they come into the space. So it's for everyone, and we welcome everyone, and we have a limited amount of seats because we really want it to be a really great and intimate opportunity for us all because it is really intimate and hard work that we all need to do, and we recognize that. So we don't want people to feel overwhelmed yeah. through their unlearning and learning process. Well, and unlearning is very, it's challenging because we, I, you know, I know that I get an identity around it. And I'm like, no, but I worked so hard to get this information and it's right. wrong. Um, right. So Right, unlearning always feels for me like a failure. And I always have to do like that positive self-talk where it's like, yeah, no, you, you're not a failure at all. Look at where you're at. You feel this way because you've done all this work to get here. Right. And it's not a failure, right? It's just not manifesting the way you want it in your head. So, yeah, the unlearning part is really hard. And I feel like it's tapping, for me, it's tapping into what does that feel like? And how would I want to be treated? That helps me really love, build and craft yeah, I love that a you humanistic framework for this art. Yeah, no, the, the extra support sounds delicious for that. And I try to remind myself, too, that you know, what I learned at the time may have been the best that was available, but our community right. is evolving really rapidly and getting new understandings that what I learned two years ago and spent a lot of trouble integrating, just there's a lot more nuances now and it's really important to pay attention to those. And I love the idea of this, the POC centered because there's so much that, you know, as if we're not in that culture, we're still like, we can be blind to, we can, our privilege lets us get through things without being aware of so much. Mm -hmm. And that right. having that focus is, that's beautiful, so powerful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's also one of those things where we want to keep it sex positive mm -hmm. and talking about things like violence and rape and assault in our communities, which happens all the time. It's and a lot of us are doing that trauma work in a variety of different ways. It's, it's challenging to stay sex positive and talk about that kind of violence and trauma, right? Like, yeah. It's one of our biggest challenges. And so I think um, what's important for people to know is that we do talk about those topics and we do it in what I like to think the most loving, humanistic way, where we divest in a disposability approach, where we're gonna say, listen, we've all been socialized in a really violent way, and yes, white supremacy and racism exist, and it hurts all of us, mm -hmm. right? The white people in the space are hurt by white supremacy too, yes, right? Yes, so yes, absolutely. It's not, just, it's not just a one direction thing, and so all of us need to be invested in justice and liberation, whatever that looks like for us, because we're all going to have a different vision and dream. Yeah. And so, you know, I know my vision of liberation might look different from yours, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And all I want for you is for you to be able to have the resources for you to find that liberation for yourself. And I don't want to get in the way of that. And I think that's, that's my most human self, right? Like that's my, me at my most, whatever, my most peace, my most, whatever, my purest essence, I yeah. guess. Well, uh, to make yeah. con and to make conscious, aware decisions about what it looks like, because it's, if you're just ignoring that you've never been exposed to this whole other aspect, it's it, how could you possibly incorporate it? Right, exactly. And I'm of the mindset where yes, there's going to be fighting, there's going to be disagreement. People are going to fuck up. People are going to fail. We're all going to do it. I'm going to fail. I don't know what my next failure is going to look like, but I failed already. You know what I mean? That's how I got here because I failed all this all these times. And, uh, you know, yeah, some of those failures are embarrassing, but I learned huge lessons from them, and I've been able to use them in a way I've not, in, like, internalized the shaming, you yeah. know, and been able to really, like, this is not shame, this is, <laughs> this is something else that I can do with this. Yeah. And, and that's really important to me. So we definitely talk about failure as well, because that's a part of <laughs> doing this work. We're going to make mistakes. Um, and I love that you're yeah. not doing disposable, because I see too much of that in the community where, you screwed up, you're out, and I'm just gonna, my friend group gets smaller and smaller right. versus, wow, that wasn't an appropriate way to say that. Right. Please upgrade or, you know, helping people. Right. Exactly, and I get that some people need to go 
through that isolation process or shrinking the inner circle. I know I went through it when my mother died. Oh. And, and that's fine. You know, we all do it at different parts yeah. of our lives. But when it comes to like a professional setting or a yeah. community form of what we all need to do or the way that we all need to collaborate to really have a fuller, larger, more strong presence, mm-hmm. that requires us to really acknowledge that we're human beings and we're going to mess up and we got to be able to hold and honor the failure as well as the feelings that arise from the failure mm-hmm. and the impact of it and heal and learn from it so it doesn't have to happen again and again and again. Yeah. Um, and that's something that really excites me as far as honoring failure in that way. Yeah. And for me, you know, I always tell my homegirls, I'm like, look, we do not have to know each other's panty size or bra <laughs> size or jock strap size to fight for each other's access to resources. Mm-hmm. You know, like I should not have to know your middle name or the fact that you don't have one in order to say you should have access to all your birth We all, every, every being should have access to this information as age exactly. appropriate it would be. Heck yeah, like that's not, you know, I don't want to be on this planet trying to get in, your, in the way of yeah. you being your best self, living your best life, whatever you want to say. You know, I want to be here to help you. I want to be one of those people where they're like, if I'm in this situation, I know Bianca can find me the right person to connect to. Yeah. I like that idea. Or Bianca's the person who I need to go to because she's the person I need to hire to come to my job and tell them what's, ha- what's happening. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. She's the expert that they'll listen to or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Um, like I want to be that kind of resource to our community members. Um, and these are one of the ways that I want to give back. Uh, and you know, and I love this stuff, right? I love being a facilitator and an educator. I really enjoy collaborating with Ida. Um, I'm really excited for what we're going to be bringing together to enhance this framework that I've already established. And I really love that Ida is down to like build with me as well. Like they are really invested as well in the vision that I have and in the ethics of how I want to build the community that we're a part of with sexuality. Oh, I know they're very powerful and very invested in like yeah. understanding this work. So yeah, it sounds so powerful. Um, yeah. Why did you decide that you wanted to teach it at Woodhull? What What is it about Woodhull that drew you? Yeah, so I grew up in the DMV area, which is DC Metro Virginia, uh, DC Maryland, Virginia. For those of you who don't know, um, we call it the DMV. So um, <laughs> there's that part, right? It's my hometown, more or less. I grew up there, um, but also Woodhull is one of the few conferences that actually has the word freedom. <laughs> in their uh, vision and in the work that they want to do. And I've just witnessed the work that Mandy and that Ricky have done um, at other conferences that I've attended from scientific things like Quad S to you know, all sorts of things like Sister Song. And the fact that they're collaborating with Sister Song this year is really meaningful for me as well. I think it's a really vital time for public policy. Yeah. Um, and Sister Song has been at the forefront of policy for a reproductive justice framework that they've been implementing and supporting and moving forward. Um, so I think that's vital. And because um, you know, I'm one of the three foundresses of WAKSHIN, which is the Women of Color Sexual Health Network. It's such and a beautiful resource. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, for people who don't know, use our acronym WOCSHN.org. Mm-hmm. And it's this is something that's for POC only, mm-hmm. where it's a membership organization. But anybody can go to our website, read what we are doing, hire one of the educators. It's a great place to find conference. really brilliant people. If you if your community mm-hmm. isn't networked to POC people, like exactly. go get yeah. go get networked. Exactly. And it's, Tons of people who are probably living in your city or in your town yeah. that you might not be able to find on like a larger network database because yeah. some, you know to be quite honest some of those membership databases are a little too expensive yeah. to be a member of every year. Um, anyways, but uh, as a founder of Watchin, when racial justice became like the thing that people were realizing they really had to invest in to really create a different kind of structural experience. Well, not structural experience, but structural implementation of what their vision is so that participants at their conference had a different experience. Uh, Woodhull and Ricky were the first people who came up with this idea of we need to collaborate with other people of communities in which we want more representation from at our conferences. And, you know, look, it's it's an idea and it's going to be a challenge. You know, racial justice work is lifelong work. There isn't one right solution to any problem. There's multiple paths to the same outcome of liberation and of justice, I believe. And so when they decided to implement that protocol, which they've done, this will be their third year, I believe, 
they came to watch him first. Nice. And they treated us as their peers. Not, uh, you know, we weren't treated as like, they didn't like pat us on the head. You know, they, you know we were really treated and honored and welcomed. And, and it was great. And I, and I love to think that um, the relationship that we were able to build with leadership there and the powers that be were one that was rooted in respect and in trust and in honesty. And it just felt like a natural connection for me to reach out to Mandy and Ricky and see if they were interested in collaborating. They never do pre-cons. Yeah. So I was taking a risk yeah. <laughs> on hearing a no. Um, because that's the thing, you know, it means more, it means more work, it means more money. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for people to know that um, they said yes. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to hear a little bit more. And when I spelled it out a little bit more for them, they were like, heck yeah, let's do it. Nice. Right? Didn't bat an eye, didn't question it. They're amazing um, people. I have yeah, so much respect for them. Um, I think that's really important for people to know, and also for people to know that yes, the price point is five hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. You do get eighteen credits, mm -hmm. which are CEUs, which you can apply for ASEC. And ASEC also CEUs also translate for the APA, the Psychological Association. So therapists can also get CEUs for that. So people are paying for the CEUs, mm -hmm. and they're also paying for the labor that I, Ida and I are doing. Mm -hmm. And so it is a livable wage fee. It is about the standard fee that you pay for a SAR of this type and at this level and at this, you know, I mean, it's actually a deal, to be quite honest, you know, because we're, do, we're bringing in such revolutionary and important conversations. From a great a perspective, people, powerful. Yeah, that a lot of people just don't ever have the opportunity to do. So mm -hmm. it's a really special time. And we also have figured out a way to share and divide money so that all of us, including Woodhull, um, are compensated fairly, and so a majority of the funds go directly to Ida and I to cover our basic needs mm -hmm. and our livelihood. So I think it's really important for people to know that the $550, a majority of that is going straight to Ida and I, and they should know that it's not going into like an HR bucket or you know the bucket for the copy paper. <laughs> it's really coming to us, and we're going to go buy groceries and a plane ticket to see our grandmothers and whatever else, you know. Um, and that was really that's really important for me to share with people because sometimes we don't know what happens behind the scenes yeah. or what kind of conversations or agreements people are be, are willing to make mm -hmm. or we hear horror stories about exploitation that didn't happen here they were mm -hmm. down to be like y'all this is your you know intellectual property this is your creativity this is your time and your labor and your bodies mm -hmm. um, you should get most of the money and that was our agreement that's so funny. congratulations yeah. yeah so it's been a great opportunity and I feel like I made the right decision. And I think it's going to be really great. So if people are struggling with the price tag, or if they want to talk a little bit about what else might be possible, or brainstorm, or whatever, they're welcome to reach out to me. My email is bianca.loriano at mac.com. I'm totally accessible. I know sometimes people see me and they're like, oh, Bianca, I know about her. I heard about her. I'm scared. She's intimidating. Yes, I don't talk a lot. Yes, not all the time. <laughs> yes, I curse all the time. Yes, I stay to myself because I'm an introvert and I'm in public. And I'm 100% accessible. And I'm probably better online than I am like, in person sometimes. But, you know, I respond to people. So I'm totally <laughs> open to people reaching out. If they have questions, that's totally, totally fine. And please do that. I'm happy to think about ways to make this accessible to everybody who wants it. Like, we should all be able to do this. Um, and that's, that's my belief about it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your generosity and for taking the time to share with us today. Um, it sounds like an amazing program. Thank you for putting that together. And if people have questions or comments, please reach out to Bianca. They, I'll put the information below. But you can also, if you have just general questions, please leave them below and I'll see if Bianca might come back sometime and answer them. So awesome. thanks very well, much. Thank you so much, Kathy, for setting this up. I really oh, appreciate pleasure. you and all your work. Thank you. I hope to see you at Woodhall soon. I will, very soon. Great. Awesome. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye.